dear brothers and sisters and the family of Joanne. This evening we all gather here to pay our tribute, our respect to someone whom we all love and someone whom she loved. And this evening when we gather as family, as friends, as children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and I'm sure the great-great-grandchild might be here as well. You know, it's nice to have that fourth generation present at this funeral service. Of course, we would be praying a couple of decades of the rosary and pray the prayers of the rosary, and then we will go for the wake service with our songs as well. And then towards the end of the service today, I would invite any one of you who would like to share your memories, any of you. I'm sure the sun will start, but then any of you would like to share your memories with Joanne and the family, please come forward that time to share your memories. You can think of something like that now. Either you can come to the microphone here or you can even stand up where you are and share your memories. That will comfort you and comfort the family when we share those memories that we had. I'm sure I will say something that I used to see in Joanne when I used to visit her at the hospital. So this evening, my dear brothers and sisters, we pray that the good Lord grant Joanne eternal reward, which he promises to every believer, and con consolation and comfort to all of you whom she has left. As we pray these glorious mysteries of the rosary, especially the two decades with the resurrection and the ascension into heaven, we will pray that the promise that the Lord Jesus made, that everyone that believes in him shall, even in death, shall rise back to life and see him face to face. Let us have that deep faith and pray these two decades of the rosary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. And she did at the right hand of the God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of our asking. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Amen. Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive, forgive us our sins, sins save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls into heaven, heaven, especially those who are most need of thy mercy. The first glorious mystery, the resurrection. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Jesus, Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those who are most need of thy mercy. Second glorious mystery, the Ascension. Father God in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thy womb, women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, 
Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. As it was in the beginning, it is now, and ever shall be, Lord, without end. Amen. Forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, and lead all souls into heaven, especially those who are most need of thy mercy. Mother of mercy, hail our life, our sweetness and our hope, to the green eye, O banished children of Eve, to the leaves and the whole sides, morning and evening, despite the tears, and then most gracious and thy days of mercy to us, and after this our exile, show the blessed hope of thy Lord Jesus, O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray, O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life. And we beseech thee, by meditating upon the mysteries of the most holy rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they and obtain what they promise for the same Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
nor does it destroy the bonds that you forge in our lives. We share the faith of your sons, disciples, and the hope of the children of God. Bring the light of Christ's resurrection to this time of testing and pain, as we pray for Joanne and for those who love her, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Thanks be to God. and sisters. Once again, my condolences to all of you. And I'm sure Joel lived a happy life with you all. And she has received all blessings and everything a Catholic, a Christian needs in her life on her way to the heaven before she left. My memories of her maybe last one and a half years or one year that I am here as pastor of the Catholic Church. Every Thursday we used to go to the hospital chapel for Mass. And of course, she couldn't come to the hospital chapel for Mass because she was with oxygen. But we used to come after Mass to all the rooms wherever our people who used to receive Holy Communion was there. And you know, always someone who was prepared and ready, seated to receive Jesus was Joanne. She was always seated. And you know, the first initial day I was sharing with Mike the other day when we were sitting and preparing the liturgy. The first weeks, couple of weeks, you know, whenever I was there, somebody had already done her hair very beautifully, well done. But I never noticed, you know, I never said anything, any complimentary words to that. But she asked me, how do you like my hair done? And you know, then I knew she likes that. And every time I walked into the room, first thing I would just, you know, like pat on the hair and say, wow, it's well done today. And she used to be very good and very happy. And she was always prepared. You know, sister always used to come with me, taking me to the other rooms. And every time we walked in, she was ready, sitting to receive Jesus. And if one day we did not go, she would call the spiritual director there and ask her to bring the communion. You know, sometimes what happens when we go, if the door is closed, normally we don't disturb. You know, somebody might be doing some assistance there, so we don't disturb them, so we can miss the room and go to the next room. So, but she did not receive communion, she used to call Dorothy for communion and she used to bring her communion the other day. And then she used to tell me, Father, you skipped me last time. <laughs> she was ready to receive that. And I'm sure, you know, this happens not with everyone. I'm here, I have done several funerals. We come mostly every two weeks, three weeks, once here and do funerals in the church. Not everyone has been, 
you know, that fortunate to get all the blessings. Of course, when she had the stroke and had gone into semi coma, like, you know, on the last Monday, I was, Mondays are actually like my day off. We don't, you know, so even today, I made sure I don't forget this, that I have to come here. So, Monday we had gone out, we were in Glendive, when I got the message that Joanne is into the, uh, moved into the hospital building, she had a stop and she is in this particular room. And so, we, soon as sisters were with me and we rushed back from uh, Glendive, came, put on my cleric collar and went into the emergency and uh, Mike was there and his wife, I believe, was, that was your wife. Sister. Oh, sorry. Yeah, they were there and we prayed. And you know, I, first of all, as soon as I knew that she is not able to make a confession, I gave her the blessings, the forgiveness for sins, so that I could give her the anointing. After anointing, you know, since I knew her, that smiley face that I used to see, even when with her hand breathing, you know, but she used to have that friendly, this one. So I asked Mike, can I, shall I give her the apostolic blessing? An apostolic blessing is done mostly towards the end, so I explained to him, you know, either the family request or the person who is dying before, you know, once they are aware of it, they ask for the apostolic blessing. And I thought, you know, once I was doing the anointing, I thought I should do that. And then I asked Mike and he said to go ahead and I prayed the apostolic blessing on Joanne and after my prayer I told Mike, I'm sure he remembers you know, it won't take more than two days. Because, you know, when we do that prayer, God, you know, she received, God, we prayed to God, as we heard in the gospel, you know, Jesus come and take her by hand to the eternal heaven. We pray for that. Because, you know, in that situation, that's what we really wanted to pray. She had to be to that heaven where there is no more torment, no more pain. And she is in a good and happy place. You know, she is there. You can believe that. You be comforted that your mom, your grandma, your great grandma has gone to a place where there is no torment, no pain, no agony, no COVID-19 at all. You know, so she is going to be in a safe place. She's going to pray for you all. You know, as she loved you all here on earth, she is going to love you and pray for all of you from heaven above. Let us turn to Christ Jesus with confidence and faith in the power of his cross and resurrection. Listen, Lord, battle of our life forever. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Promise and image of what we shall be. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Son of God, who came to destroy sin and death. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Word of God, who delivered us from the sin and fear of death, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Crucified Lord, forsaken in death, raised in glory, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, gentle shepherd, who bring rest to our souls, give peace to Joanne forever, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bless those who mourn and are in pain. Bless Joanne's family and friends who gather around her, around her today. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Once again, one last time, when we are all gathering with the body of Joanne among us, let us say this Lord's Prayer together and offer it for her. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, our Redeemer, you willingly gave yourself up to death so that all might be saved and pass from death to life. We humbly ask you to comfort the servants in their grief and receive Joanne into the hands of your mercy. You alone are the Holy One. You are mercy itself. By dying, you unlock the gates of life 
For those who believe in you, forgive Joanne her sins and grant her a place of happiness, light and peace in the kingdom of your glory forever and ever. Amen. And this is the time for sharing the memories and eulogy. So I would like to first invite Mike and then uh, you're all invited. Whoever would like to share memories, either you could come forward or stand where you are. time trying to come up with something good and inspirational. So <coughs> it is. Um, first of all, thanks for everyone being here. Um, it's going to be kind of difficult and different for, for us that uh, got our daily calls, right? The mom was a very, um, very much wanted to know how we were doing. She wanted to know everything was okay. So we got calls, and we used to, among the siblings, kind of make jokes to each other that, well, mom called, and then Mary would say, yeah, mom called, and mom said, yeah, mom called, mom called again, mom called again. <laughs> but it was because she loved us, and she wanted to know how we were doing. She, she genuinely cared about us. She cared about everybody. She didn't have, she gave. And she taught us from a young age to help others. If somebody was in need, you took care of them. It didn't matter why or what. If they were in need, you just helped them out. And when we were young, we had some neighbors that had a rather large family, and they, they didn't have a lot of furniture. So I remember pretty vividly taking our furniture down to their house and the whole time thinking, why are we doing this? We're giving away all of our furniture. We have no more dressers, but they needed dressers and we wanted to make sure that they were taken care of because they had more need than we did. I didn't understand it at the time. I do now, but it was her selflessness. Um, so I want to I want to read a couple of scriptures that, that I think are really important. One comes out of the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 10. God says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God, and I will strengthen you. I will also help you, and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is always there. Even in our darkest hours, He's there. When you're scared, when you're frustrated, when you don't know Him, God is there. He will not leave you. He will never forsake you. Ecclesiastics chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. There is an appointed time for everything. And there is a time for every event under heaven. There's a time to give birth. And there's a time to die. A time to plant. And a time to uproot what is planted. There's a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to, to uh, tear down and a time to build up. There is a time to weep and there's a time to laugh. And there's a time to mourn and a time to dance. And it was, I guess maybe ironic or maybe it was God trying to say something to us. But um, the night long past, there was a little baby born just, just exactly what the scripture says. There is a time to die. There's a time to be born. We all, we all are going to someday meet our maker. So it's important that we have peace with our Lord. Second Chronicles chapter 7, 14. I think this speaks right now where we're at in this world and where we need to be. My people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways and I will hear from heaven and forgive
forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. And that's what we need. We need healing in our land. We need healing in our hearts. We need healing in our families. I was very fortunate to have a mom that, uh, that loved me and took care of me. I always like to make jokes about stuff, <laughs> so I'm going to try to do that. But I was very fortunate because I was born um, with a hair that left pellet, and I know it was a very tough at the moment. But she did so much for me. She made sure that I went through a lot of surgeries. She gave up a lot. For but she made sure I was taken care of because she loved me. She could have been like other moms and not had the surgeries done, but she sacrificed for me. Um, she, uh, she was always there. And I know I <laughs> put her through a lot, but I love mom a lot, more than I can even imagine this to come up with. And mom taught me a lot of things when I was young. She may not have thought she did, but she did. She said many times, and I remember at a young age, that we need to pray and pray hard because I need to get the Kleenex. Thank you. She said pray and pray hard because the time is short. We need to pray for our brothers and sisters and family. We need to pray for everybody. And I remember as a little boy, every Sunday morning, we got put in the back of the station wagon and away to church we went. And we went over to the old county rest home. And I remember that was my first experience with Father O'Reilly. <laughs> and he probably didn't mind me then. <laughs> Just high school, I get no problem with us. <laughs> but through that, mom would drag us around and, and we would do things for people and, and she just reinforced that need to help others and share with others and to respect your elders. And then the, uh, the words that I heard for years and years and didn't quite really understand was, that uh, I was there to be seen and not heard. And as a five, six year old boy, I didn't quite understand that because I wanted to be heard. <laughs> but again, one thing that mom did a lot of was taking food to people and, and giving food to people and giving clothing to people. And I think a lot of that came from the Great Depression. She learned that you needed to take care of your family and your friends because you might have a time when you need help. And she didn't do it for any other reason but because it was the right thing to do. She went without a lot because it was more important to give than to receive. She understood the teaching of Jesus and it is, it is better to give than it is to receive. She worked very hard all her life and uh, now she's receiving her rewards. So I remember a lot of things. It's strange, you know, sometimes you vivid memories. So I'm going to give it from Mike's perspective, which is obviously the correct one. My sister's <laughs> Obviously, probably don't remember it this way, but I got to set the record straight. So we lived in an old farmhouse that was built probably in the early 1900s. And I remember it because it had a huge kitchen. And yeah, it was small, but boy, it was, in my memory, it was huge. And 
mom could never understand why I had so much energy until I think one day she caught me. We had these big old bins that you pulled down that were full of sugar and full of flour. And my favorite treat, because we lived out in the country, we didn't get to go to town all the time, was a piece of white bread with butter, and I would fold it in half. And then I would open up the sugar container, and I'd get a cup of sugar and put it in there. And after about four or five of them, I was wound well tight. <laughs> <laughs> that's probably why mom's favorite saying is, I think I'm going to pull my hair out. I'm going to be crazy. <laughs> but um, that, that was one of my favorite treats. Um, <laughs> another thing is, um, mom used to cook all the time. And well, so Levon's a little bit older than I am. And, I was the little brat brother that got into all her stuff and broke everything and whatever. But I remember I had a sidekick, Joe Riley, and, and we went everywhere together. He was a year older than me. And one day we came in from playing, and I was about five, maybe four or five, somewhere there. And it was fair time. And LeVon was making pies for the fair. I didn't know it was fair. We just happened to wander in the kitchen and smell these wonderful smells and seen some pies on the stove. So, being a little boy, we decided, hey, let's take one out and we'll have a pie. <laughs> so, as we were sneakily putting our hand, I was put my hand under the pie, it was still warm. Mom said, Mike, get out of the kitchen. And I was like, where is she? I said, I'm in here. And we were quiet. And then all of a sudden there was a shriek and LeVon seen me with her pie, I think. And it scared me and I went like this and folded the pie up. So, <laughs> and immediately dropped it and on a dead sprint was running out the door. Because <laughs> I knew the big sister was going to kill me. I got about 10 yards outside and felt a thunk in the back of my head. And she hit me with a fork. <laughs> so I'm doing this little circle screaming and blood squirting everywhere. <laughs> And mom saved me from LeVon, because if she would have got a hold of me, that would have been the end. <laughs> and for years, I've heard the story, but I was actually innocent. I, <laughs> it wasn't my fault. It was pies. <laughs> uh, a couple other things that um, probably the funniest event and the thing that mom always wanted to be, when we went out in town, we had to be clean. You didn't have to have the nicest clothes in the world, but you had to be clean and you had to be proper. So one day we hopped in this station wagon. Mom had to go to town or something. And the mom was with mom, I believe, in the front seat. Me and Mary were in the back. And it was early in the morning, and mom just rushes out the car. So we come out of it, you know, we woke up and had blankets around us. We went out in the car. We get into town. There used to be a little store called the Bean Bag on Main Street across the courthouse. So LeVon and Bob went into the store to get something, and time kept going by and going by. And me and Mary thought, well, let's go in and see what they're doing. Well, all we had was underwear. So we knew that you wouldn't go out. Public in their underwear, so we decided to put the blanket around us and go to the store. <laughs> the same mom was mortified as <laughs> yeah, I can just imagine. <laughs> so Mary and I are have this blanket wrapped around us, and we're wandering through the store, and mom sees us, and her eyes got big, and she comes around the aisle trying to hide from us. <laughs> about five or six years old, it's like, what are you doing? It's like, I don't know these kids, she keeps working away from us. So she gets up to the till and she can't, she can't get away from us as we come up right beside her. And I know she was still, she did beat red, she was so embarrassed. We get up in the car. And for years, she was so, she would tell that story and I was like, well, hey, I, I, I had a blanket on. <laughs> It was just, it was hilarious. But those are some of the things I remember as a kid. 
I can tell you stories of when I tried to learn how to drive and got pulled over by the police and Bob kept saying, I told you so, I told you so. <laughs> but, um, Mom had, a, I, I can't say it all, Mom had a heart of gold. She had quite the temper. Um, and I learned at a very young age when, when you got mother mad, you just went outside and don't come back for about 12 hours. And hopefully she's not mad anymore. But I'm going to miss Mom, but I know where Mom is at. I don't know where she's at. She's with Jesus. She's with her family. And that's the most important thing. I'm very fortunate to have a mom that loved me. And somebody who shared Jesus with me at a young age. I didn't understand who Jesus was for a long time. And it took me a long time to come to know that Jesus is my only way. And all the stupid, terrible things I've done in my life, he's forgiven me for. And my prayers for everyone in here, if you do not know Jesus, it's not too late. He'll never walk away from you. He'll never turn his back on you. And he'll love you for who you are. And those sins too big. Nothing is too big for Jesus to forgive. Hope that someday when we move along to the next area of our great adventure, that we're all together laughing about all the silly things we do and seeing all those who pass before us and being able to reunite with our Lord and with our family. have any stories Thank you. 
you're not an idol. Well, here I'll give you mine. That was Joanne. And I think anybody that knew her knew what a wonderful person she was. She wasn't a taker. She was a And we, we all love her today. And she is in a better place. She's with my sister Marilyn. She's with my my mother and my dad. Her mother. Thank you. Thank you for the beautiful sharing and I'm sure you will have a little more time over to at the other side to visit with one another. I'm sure after the service tomorrow we will also be gathering for the luncheon and I'm sure you will have enough time also to share some of your memories there so you can think of with it maybe today when you are done the service today. Let us pray. Lord God, you are attentive to the voice of our pleading. Let us find in your Son comfort in our sadness, certainty in our doubt, and courage to live through this hour. Make our faith strong through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and, and let her perpetual light shine upon her, and may she rest in peace. Amen. Amen. And may her soul and the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
dear brothers and sisters and the family of Jonah, this morning we gather once again in this sacred heart Catholic Church where she attended Masses, where she prayed. And finally, one time we bring her to this church where she wants to say goodbye. Goodbye to the community, goodbye to the Sacred Heart family. And I'm sure she doesn't say goodbye to God, but she is welcomed to be with God there in heaven. But she is saying a goodbye, a final time with all of us present here. We are glad we have the mortal body among us. And we pray that if something needs to be forgiven, something remains to be forgiven, may that all be forgiven. And may all of you, the family, friends, whom she loved and whom you love, may be consoled at this time of losing her from our life. A mother, a grandmother, a great grandmother, and a cousin, and a good friend of so many of you. Especially we also have some representatives from the hospital with whom or who took care of them for the last two, nearly two years. We thank God for the gift of Joanne. And as we participate in this Mass, we pray for blessings upon each one of us, blessings upon Joanne and the family. Let us pray. O oh God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant, John, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may now rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever.
not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For Christ, while we were still helpless, yet died at the appointed time for the ungodly. Indeed, only with difficulty does one die for a just person, though perhaps for a good person one might even find courage to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. How much more then, since we are now justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath? Indeed, if, while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his Son, how much more, once reconciled, will we be saved by his life? Not only that, but we also boast of God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Love 
with everyone else that came to her lap. When she was at the extended care, I have seen her being loved by others, and she loved others there. So today when we celebrate her life, we can be sure she has lived a life worthy of eternal happiness. Again in the Gospel, this morning we hear, a grain of wheat, if it remains in our bottles or in our barns, it just remains there. But the moment it falls to the ground, it becomes a band and it produces more. The same way, all of us, today is Joanne's turn, tomorrow might be me or someone else. But every human being, irrespective of what office they hold, everybody will have to die. Everyone will have to say goodbye to their family, to their beloved ones in this world. Everyone. And it is not for, you know, for nothingness that we die, but to produce more as the wheat dies, to bring up more wheat into this world. So when our dearly beloved dies, we feel lost for a while, but they are in the bliss of heaven. They are with the heavenly father, thanking, praising God, at the same time interceding for the family that they live behind. Anyone, you know, when we leave, when we lose someone, we might for a little while feel lost, but then soon you will see blessings come your way. I'm sure your mom is going to pray for all of you. Your grandmother, your great grandmother is going to pray for each of you and bring God's blessings for you from heaven. In the Gospel set, we hear this beautiful story of Jesus standing with his disciples in the temple of Jerusalem, near the treasury where the offering box was kept. And you know, so many people came with a lot of wealth and deposited into this offering box there, and we don't walk in. I took in a small coin and dropped it, it into the collection basket there. And Jesus said to his disciples, this widow has put it in more than anyone else. You might wonder why I'm saying this to you. As we you heard Mike saying, when they were little, the neighbor with a large family wanted something that they had, but the family did not have. Not because she had it in abundance in her own home, but she thought more, maybe more than my family, that family is in need of it. Not from the abundance, not from the surplus that they had, but she took what she or her family would have really used it, but found the need of somebody else could have used too much more than us, and she was ready to give. And today, when Jesus sees Joanne coming to her, Jesus is going to say, I love you for your generous heart. You know, anyone who had a near death experience, and you know, if they come back to life, after a near death experience, and once they come back to, they can, they say, we have seen, like, splashing the life that we had lived. What comes mostly is the love that we had for one another. The generous love that I had for my friends is what I'm going to splash through. And when that comes to Jesus, Jesus is going to say, Joanne, I love you for the love you had shown to your neighbors, to your family, to your friends, to everyone that came into your life was something solid, something great, and appreciate you for bringing you to the heavens. Your mother, your grandmother loved everyone, and it was not from, you know, the abundance that she had, but she thought the other person was in me. She was not a taker, but a giver. That's what we heard yesterday. So, believe in those beautiful qualities of your mother and your grandmother and your baby grandmother. Take something from her life in your risk. Don't go and take everything that you have and give it to your neighbor to them. But take something essential from her life, imbibe it into your life today. Promise your mom and grandmother today, mom, grandma, 
I love you and I promise you the teachings, the lessons that you have given to us through your life, we are going to keep it for ourselves and we will live the way you taught us. Even if she was a little stricter or anything, it was to make your life a happier one. And today when we are bidding her farewell and sending her to the home, the everlasting home, where we all will meet her one day, we say, thank you, mom, thank you, grandma, and wish you say, journey to the home in heaven. Pray for us when you are there. Pray for our needs to the Heavenly Father. Send the guiding angels to watch over us. Keep us away from all dangers, all harm. Keep our family knit together. Keep us all safe. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church, confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus. We join our prayers to this. In baptism, John received the light of Christ, scattered the darkness now, and leave her over the waters of death. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sister Joanne was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly family. We pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us. On our way to the kingdom, grant them an everlasting home with your son. We pray. The family and friends of Joanne seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that comes from thee. Lord, we pray. Lord, hear our prayers. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Joanne. Strengthen our faith so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray. Lord, hear our prayers. Lord God. Giver of peace and healer of souls. Hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people, whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ and grant them a place in your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. You offer to this case. Alton and Bear, please go back. the fire. 
may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father, and the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of His holy church. His Christ. As we humbly present it to you, these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant, Joanna, we beseech your mercy that she, who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior, may find in him a merciful dead, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you yeah. and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. In Him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Salvation. 
Giving thanks that you have held this worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church to spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Joanne, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased to you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is to us forever and ever.
the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting.
Joanne. After the graveside service, after the community at the graveside, the family would like to have you present at the lantern. Uh, it's put in the, the this one has the rice center, but it's at the Irish center. Not at the Rally Center, but at the Thai Center. So we would all are invited to invite you to come back to the Thai Center for the luncheon and for a time with the family. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our favor express our affection for them, make peace our sadness, and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully meet her again, when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself.
Dear friends, our sister Joanne has gone to her rest in the peace of Christ. May the Lord now welcome her to the table of God's children in heaven. With faith and hope in eternal life, let us assist her with our prayers. Let us pray to the Lord also for ourselves. May we who mourn be reunited one day with our sister. Together may we meet Christ Jesus when he who is our Lord appears in glory. We read in the sacred scripture, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, says the Lord, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by your own three days in the tomb, you hallowed the graves of all who believe in you, and so made the grave a sign of hope that promises resurrection even as it claims our mortal bodies. Grant that our sister may sleep here in peace until you awaken her to glory. For you are the resurrection and the life, and then she will see you face to face, and in your light will see light, and know the splendor of God, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Our sister Joanne has, for our sister Joanne, let us pray to our Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me shall live even in death, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Lord, you consoled Martha and Mary in their distress. Draw near to us who mourn for Joanne, and dry the tears of those who weep. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. You wept at the grave of Lazarus, your friend. Comfort us in our sorrow. We pray to the Lord. You raised the dead to life. Give to our sister eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Our sister was washed in baptism and anointed with the Holy Spirit. Give her fellowship with all your saints, we pray to the Lord. She was nourished with your body and your blood. Grant her a place at the table in your heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Comfort us in our sorrow at the death of Joanne. Let our faith be consolation and eternal life our hope. We pray to the Lord. Once last time before we lower the body into this place of rest, let us take the Lord's name and offer it once again for Joanne. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. God of holiness and power, accept our praise on behalf of your servant, Joanne. Do not count her deeds against her, for in her heart she desired to do your will. As her faith united her to your people on earth, so may your mercy join her to the angels in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. May her soul and the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
this time. This does conclude the committal service here at the cemetery. On behalf of the family, please join them down to the parish center for a reception and a lunch. It's just a block and a half past the church where we were just at on Montana Street.